again, everybody. This morning I'll be introducing Robert Brook. Robert is certainly qualifies for the Renaissance Man of the Year. His resume is very impressive. The most, one of the most impressive things is he's a graduate of Virginia Tech. <laughs> and he has his PE license. But his interests go beyond engineering. Very broad here. He's a faculty member on the Institute for Facilities Research, Higher Education Facilities of APA. He's an advisory member of the Facilities Research Council. He's a uh, defense instructor for the U.S. Army. And he's produced a number of publications, too many to mention actually, uh, managing the facilities portfolio, uh, the National Association of Colleges and University Business Offices. And he wrote an article called The History of Facilities Conditions Index. A uh, very sweeping article. Uh, his civic activity is also very impressive. Uh, he uh, has been past president of the Institute of Industrial Engineers. He's a PTA president, uh, Virginia Council of Council Representatives of Fairfield. Um, he's a founding member of the Great Neck Homeowners Association, and he was just expounding on all the fun that provided. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he has uh, some very fun awards. Distinguished Service Award for the, from the Virginia Beach PTA. PTA leader, leadership, Virginia Education Association. He's also a graduate of the Virginia Beach Citizens Police Academy. And he's also a graduate of the FBI Citizens Police Academy. Wow. And he's, the, he's won the award called the Rising Star Higher Education Facilities Office. So without any further ado, I think we ought to give this man as much time as we can. So Bob Brook, you've got the floor. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks again for the invitation to be here. Um, appreciate the resume and info. And if you've ever wanted to make some enemies, be sure to join a homeowners association. Because <laughs> if you do it one time, you'll find out that I made enemies of people that never even met me. They really didn't like me. And still have. Right, right. Uh, I'm here today to talk about SCORE. Um, I became the chair of the chapter about a year and a half ago. Um, I'm not sure whether that was a, a great thing that I got or whether I stepped into it by accident. But I thought I'd like to at least talk to you about what SCORE is. First of all, by show of hands, does everybody know who SCORE is or has heard of SCORE? Anybody know who SCORE is? Okay, so a few of you. Well, <clears throat> I wish I would have known about SCORE when I got into business because it's a great organization. Um, I want to give you, I don't want to bore you with a lot of statistics that I have here. I'm going to try to bore you in other ways. <laughs> but SCORE is all about the numbers. Um, SCORE used to stand for, they don't like to even say it, but I'm going to go ahead and say it, it used to stand for the Service Corps of Retired Executives. And they got away from that because a lot of people like myself are still working, who are not really retired. We have about 25 people here local who are SCORE mentors. Um, but I, let me just finish out with my background. I, again, I'm a graduate of Virginia Tech. I have two grown daughters. I'm a native of Norfolk. I'm your native. I'm a, I'm your neighbor. I'm from here. I went to Granby High School. Anybody else go to Granby High School? Okay. Uh, I went to Meadowbrook, Northside, and, uh, and then I went to Virginia Tech. Uh, back then they called it DDI. <laughs> um, and I have two daughters that are married. And I just three weeks ago I became a, a granddad. Right. And I have a cat named Putty. <laughs> Uh, my entrepreneur life, how did I get into SCORE? Well, I had three general background, and I'll just summarize it. I was a consulting engineer, I was in the restaurant business for 20 years, and I also had a general background in real estate, not as an agent, just as an investor, as I'm sure many of you all are. Uh, so that helped prepare me to get into SCORE. Um, so what does SCORE do? 
can't really see this from here, so I'm just going to have to talk through it. Um, SCORE provides counseling to people who really business counseling. Has anybody ever been to SCORE seeking advice? Okay, y'all. So y'all went there and actually had an idea for a business or were starting a business, and you talked to people. Great. Um, the, the chapter is located in Norfolk at uh, the Retail Alliance building on Granby Street, and we have a satellite office in Virginia Beach. So what happens is, is you come in there and you'll meet with somebody and say, I got an idea, I want to do a business. Or I've had somebody who wanted to sell a business. I had a woman come into me who was 77 years old trying to sell her business. So she wanted advice from us. Everything we do, we're all volunteers. We don't get paid, so we can give somebody unvarnished advice. <laughs> we don't, we're, not, we're not related to somebody. We're not getting a commission. I had a person come in to me that had a lease that thick. They were getting ready to sign to move to buy a, a nail business. It was a woman who wanted to buy a nail business. And I said, have you seen this thing? And she goes, well, yeah, I've looked. I said, well, it says here you're waiving your right to eminent domain. Now everybody here knows what that means, right? Yeah. Okay. She didn't know. And I said, what this means is if the state comes in and takes this shopping center and gives the owner $10 million, you know what you get? Nothing. Nothing. I said, does that make you happy if you've invested a lot of money? She goes, no, I wouldn't like that. I said, what you do is you take a pen and you strike that out. She said, you can do that? I said, absolutely. <laughs> it's all, everything's negotiated. So that's kind of the stuff I would do. Now I'm sure they get the... Uh, owner of that property would be mad at me, right? So we do that. You can't really see it here, so I'll just tell you the numbers. Uh, last year, 14, we provided 500,000 hours of total hours across the country. Um, every, all of our sessions are from 30 minutes to an hour apiece. And you can come back as often as you like. Um, we provide counseling, again, Real estate is a part of almost every business in some aspect. So I'll say, yeah, you know, I'm not going to write your lease, but I'll review your lease. I'm not going to do your tax return, but I'll review it. We have people who are accountants that will review the tax return, and we have people that look at business plans. we got somebody who's getting ready to do an IPO because of SCORE. Uh, the Adventure Park down at the ocean front. anybody been there? You know where it is? That was a SCORE client. Savor the olive, the olive oil store, if you're familiar with that, that was a score time. Now, not every person that comes to us is a success story, but we're proud of the ones that we do it. And actually, I like to tell people, you know, you've heard about the statistic about 80% of the people going into business, failing, or whatever. I want to keep you into the 20%. I'd rather you not do anything than to sign a lease and lose a lot of money. And I, and I consider that a valuable service. Um, somebody asked me about SCORE. I said, you know, you've heard of Habitat for Humanity. You get out there and you tear houses down and you fix them up and you build a house and everybody feels good. This is kind of like that, only it's a lot less physical work. <laughs> I've done Habitat for Humanity in the, day, in the summer and in the winter. And, you know, it's cold and then it's hot. And you, and you feel good. But I also feel good talking to somebody who's not trying to start a business or wants to do an IPO. How do I get into government contracting? Well, I did that for 20 years. My first question is, what do you mean government contracting? Is that <laughs> federal, state, or local? They said, oh, I meant DOD, I meant the Navy. I said, well then, it's not what you want to do is DOD contract. So if you want to do, that's mark, market segmentation. What do you want, who do you want to sell to? Oh, I had never thought about selling to the city of Norfolk. Is what you're doing any value to the city of Norfolk? Maybe so. I know plenty of people that do nothing but do work selling to local municipalities. So don't lock yourself out and say, well, I just want to do work for the federal government. We probably have our local chapter, probably 50% of the people that come to us are service disabled veterans. They want to get into doing work for the Navy. Okay? Surprise, surprise. Everybody wants to do that. They have no background in, in filling out an RFP or responding to an RFP. Sure y'all, some of y'all have done that, maybe many of y'all have done it. Um, and I sit there and say, okay, you know, here's the thing called Fed Biz Ops. And we turn that on and we say, gosh, this is a lot of work. Yeah, it is a lot of work. <laughs> I thought we could, I thought that I was a service disabled veteran and I could just sort of, you know, show my badge and I would get it. I said, no, it doesn't work that way. I said, you know what? Because there's a lot of people that have the same badge. 
than of a service disabled veteran. And I try to sit there and say, you want to make sure that this doesn't spoil your personal life. Because I, I was in the restaurant business, and it didn't spoil my life, but I knew plenty of people that got into the restaurant business and had a problem. You know, the divorce. Children not speaking to their parents anymore. And if you all know anybody in the restaurant business, to any number, you'll, you'll know that that's happens. I had somebody come in to me last week at who wants to open up a food truck to selling Caribbean food, Caribbean food. So my first question to this person was, so what is Caribbean food? Do you, does everybody know what Caribbean food is? Okay, they told me, I said, that's fine. I said, but what else? She said, well, I'm gonna make this wrap based on pulled pork and all I said, that's great. What else? What else do I need? I said, huh? Suppose a woman comes up and wants to buy one of your sandwiches. He's got a kid, the kid wants a hot dog. Well, I'm not gonna sell hot dogs. Well, then they're gonna leave your food truck. They're gonna go to some place. So you're gonna have to have a children's menu. I never thought about it. So some of this is common sense. I'm sure some of y'all have been in the restaurant business. Some of you've been in the real estate business and some of y'all been in the consulting business. So everybody in this room is a potential score mentor, which is why I'm gonna make this plug. Um, please, Think about what you do, what your background is, and think about doing the score of council. It's fun, it's very, very rewarding. And it's done in an air-conditioned environment, so there's no physical work. <laughs> <laughs> and the nice thing is, is you kind of set your own hours. We really operate Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays. And if you said, hey, I'd like to do it on Friday, we'll set you up with an office. But basically, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And you say, well, what, do I, what can I do? Whatever. We've got accountants. I'm an engineer. Uh, I've got some people that are high-tech people. I had a guy. I have a guy who's a really high-tech person who worked with Grace Hopper. Does everybody know who she was? Yeah. Yes. She was like one of the queen, the beginning people of the of the computer world. Harper. Grace Hopper. Hopper. Yes. Hopper. Mother of Hopper. football. Grace Hopper. <laughs> if, you, if you ever want to read an interesting story about something, read her background. You'll find out more about computers than you ever thought about. Here's a woman that. She's not Bill Gates. He didn't make all this money. But without her, there wouldn't have been a big computer business. We've been, we've been decades back. And this guy used to work with Grace Hopper. That's how. And this guy's 75 years old, 78, but he's the sharpest attack when it comes to the IT. You wouldn't think about it. So I want to encourage everybody to think about coming into score. Um, the, the process is very simple. All we need really is somebody that knows the difference between um, Knowledge and, and wisdom. What's the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit, technically. But wisdom is know, knowing that you would never put a tomato in a fruit salad. <laughs> right? Right. And everybody here has that, that wisdom. That comes with life. Knowledge and wisdom. All these, I got these people coming into me at score want to talk about how to make a million dollars. The old <laughs> threshold. I said, you know, it's easy. Not you take a penny, if you all may have heard this, you take a penny and you put it in a can. It's one penny. Then the next day you throw two pennies in. The next day you throw four pennies in. And the next eight. If you double it. So how long does it take you to come up with a million dollars at that rate? Anybody know? Um, about a month, about 30 less than 30 days. days. About 29 and a half days. Yeah. And remember, that last day is a tough one. That last day is, you have to, go, you have to put 500,000 in to get to that million. <laughs> but it's a, fun, it's a fun exercise. And I say, OK, you, yeah, you have to have the money. But think about this as your client base. Think about that first client that you get, how good. Somebody actually gives you money for your product and service, how good you feel. And then you get that second client. And then that next client. And pretty soon you're doubling your client base. And yes, um, GM would love to double their business every year. Those days are past for GM. But for a brand new business, it's, it's right around the corner. And everybody in this room probably has the ability to sit down with somebody who's going to start a business. I want to open up a food truck, which everybody in here. I, first thing I told the guy, or the woman, I said, you know, food trucks are not very popular at Virginia Beach. They have a park now. Huh? They have a park now, and so it, it's changing. But I, I told her, I said, uh, they don't even allow food trucks at town center. 
So the first thing you need to do is find out where can you park your food truck. But then the next thing I did, because I'm an old facilities guy, I said, where can you park your food truck when you're not using it? What do you mean when I, I said, well, you can't be doing it 24 hours a day. Can you park it in your neighborhood? Like, we have a covenant neighborhood. We have a home. I said, you're not going to park your food truck in your driveway. So you're going to have to find a place to park your food truck when you're not using it. I had never thought about that. So everybody in here, if, you, if somebody said I want to open up any kind of business, one of my first things, I'm not an insurance agent, but my first question is, have you contacted your insurance agent? Somebody wants to use their car to, to transport homeless children or, or sick people to their medical appointments. Oh, I want to help out. I want to give back. Great. I know you want to give back. But remember, Bill Gates gave back after his Microsoft was in business for 25 years. He didn't open up. She said, I have to do that? I said, yeah, as soon as you put somebody in your car for hire, you need an insurance agent. You need a special policy. And everybody in the room would know that. And I'm not telling y'all, but this is what we get. We have people coming in who have all kinds of ideas wanting to sell a business. God wants to sell his business. Is this a good price? I said, I don't know. The guy had a home theater business. He wanted to move to Texas where there was a big building boom. He was trying to sell his business for $125,000. And I said, well, don't, he was going to sign an agent, he was going to sign an agreement with Sunbelt Business Brokers. Everybody ever heard of them? Yeah. Yeah. We looked at the agreement, and I said, if you sign this agreement, you're going to owe this guy five grand whether he does anything or not. I said, the way this is worded. He said, well, I'm going to owe him if he, if he sells the business. I said, no, if he, according to this way it's written, you're going to owe him five grand as soon as you sign this. And everybody in this room would be able to counsel somebody like that. So again, I'd like people to just think about coming to SCORE and offering your services. Because SCORE is all about the numbers, like every business is. SCORE is not a business. We don't get paid. We are somewhat funded by the Small Business Administration. We've been around since 1964. So back when you could buy a car for, what, a couple of thousand dollars? I was looking at a magazine the other day. What a great ad. They had a toy introducing the new Toyota Corolla. They had a two-door, a four-door, and a hatchback. This was 1965. Two door, four door, and hatchback. You can buy all three for $5,500. <laughs> Be the first on your block to have three new Toyotas. $5,500 for all three. But uh, so the score chapter here locally is, is now 50 years old. And, and you know, you say, well, okay, so what? Well, what's happened in the last 50 years? Everybody here's not everybody, but most people here are old enough to think back about what's happened in 50 years with technology. And SCORE has been able to, to be current. We have to go on top of technology. We have to be pretty good with social media. Everybody now comes into SCORE and wants to talk about their website. We have website people who are specialists. We say, hey, that's not the whole thing. Because I started a business, there was no such word as a website. I'm sure some of you all that started businesses know what I'm talking about. There was, you didn't open up a business, that, that wasn't your first thought. Now it's your first thought. What's my website? What's my search engine optimization, a term unknown, maybe five or at least ten years ago was an unknown term. Now it's, now you can go to college and get a degree in search engine optimization. You know, people worry about it, write books, but we have to stay on top of it. And it's not hard, it's fun, and it's really nice if I can help somebody start a business, but I really make sure they don't want to make a mistake. Because I always like to tell somebody, you don't want to spoil a personal life of this. Our goal, our vision is to help a million clients by 2020, and with y'all's help, we could we could make that goal a little easier. And again, you can you can set your hours on this Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Uh, it could be one hour a week, or it could be whatever you want. And you just go in there and you meet the people. Somebody else makes the appointment, so really you just sort of show up. And I think you find it very fun. So anybody would like to even think about it, give me talk to me, and I will. Uh, give you a, a, a contact. Has anybody ever done these four counting? I guess I should have asked. But, okay. Um, it's it's a it's a great thing. I wish I would have known about it when I got in when I started got into business because it was. I see that it's it's nice to have somebody that doesn't have a vested interest to talk to you about uh, a business or an idea. We don't try to talk anybody out of anything. And I've had some weird ones. I had a woman come into me that wanted to sell 
witchcraft and uh, vegans and vegans or whatever it is, she had a certified witch on her staff. And she wanted to sell potions and herbs, you know, like the Eye of Newton, that kind of thing. She was going to sell it in uh, Suffolk. The <laughs> <laughs> branch office in Pungo. Yeah, and I said, I said, you know, Suffolk is kind of a peanut ham area. I, I don't know that witchcraft is a big thing out there. You know, maybe over there in Ghent or something, you know. <laughs> but I she said, well, the rent is so cheap. I said, well, <laughs> there might be a reason for that. Put a curse on you? Put a curse on you. So I, I certainly, uh, I, I, again, I didn't really say, you know, I don't think there's a market for this. He says, I don't want to rain on somebody's parade. You know, Bill Gates had to have a dream one time, too. He quit Harvard to go into computer business. I'm sure his parents were mortified. But if somebody says, what should I do? I'd say, here's what I would do if I were you. You know, you're going to have to market this thing. It's, it, it always comes down to the permits, insurance, marketing, cash flow. Where you, I want to go to the bank and borrow all this money. So does everybody else. And the banks are, you know, they got a line of people. They want to know what you have skin in the game. Most of the people have never heard that expression. You know, they think you're going to walk in and borrow $100,000 from Bank of America. And uh, the banks are, oh, sure, sure. We, we love that idea of a food truck. We, yeah, we need a food truck selling Caribbean food in the summer. What are you going to do in the winter? I love selling chili dogs. Oh, yeah, here's 100000 <laughs> So we try to sit there and say, okay, before you go to the bank, come up with a business plan. We give them a model and a template. Here's how you fill it in. And come see us before you give it to the bank. Because we've got some people here that have former bank folks that are really look at it and say, this is terrible. Don't submit this to the bank. You're going to get one chance to make that first impression. And so you can come to us and say, what do you think? And we've got no reason other than to say this is a good plan or a bad plan. And um, we don't want somebody to go to a bank and get turned down. We don't want to spoil somebody's dream. We just want to support somebody's dream. So I think I was supposed to stop at age 25, so I'm getting close to it. Um, I guess, are there any questions? Because I know we cut down. Uh, yes, sir. Just a quick question. You mentioned that you are um, SBA, I guess, is covering your overhead and sort of picking up your office expenses and so forth. Do you have any reporting requirements? Uh, Absolutely, absolutely. It's, we have a thing called CORE, and we have to report every hour that we submit with somebody, and then the the SBA contacts the people to find out did you did you talk to Bob Brooks and was he helpful? Uh, those numbers, the five hundred thousand that we that we submitted hours last year, that, that's reported. So it's we have to it's done in a system. But yes, to answer your question. Abs absolutely, it's all about the. The people who work for SCORE, which I'm not an employee, I'm a volunteer, the people who work for SCORE in D.C., they're paid employees. And of course, they need the numbers, they need to have the, how many people you're doing, so forth. And so they're always saying, if you can find some more mentors, get more mentors in, more experience, it keeps everybody fresh. It was called the Anchor Inn. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. I miss that place. Yeah, well, I'll sit down one time and tell you what I don't miss about it. Question over here, Bob. Yeah. Yes, sir. Do you have anybody from the various cities on your staff? Because when I started my business, that was the biggest time to find what you can do, where you can do it, building, all that kind of stuff. Well, we have a little punch sheet that we hand out that says if you're going to go to Norfolk or Virginia Beach, here's where you go for zoning, here's where you go for permits, here's where you so we, we, but no, we don't have anybody that's actually a city employee. And I, I doubt they would even be allowed. Well, that's an ex-city employee. Oh, yes, yeah. I, yeah, if you know one, tell them to come see me. The other, the other question is, how many people do you send to Shark Tank? <laughs> <laughs> Over at Old Dominion? Oh, you mean the TV show. Yeah, the TV show. <laughs> do your volunteer advisors have any liability uh, coverage? The national, we have a... We have, there is an umbrella policy that covers everybody. Uh, to my knowledge, it's never been, we've never had a, a lawsuit, but we have a coverage. So that, and so again, we're very careful about what we say that you can do or what you should do. Uh, we don't say, oh, do this and this will make you a lot of money. We would never make that. We're, we're more cautionary. So there's really not, not many ways for somebody to sue us unless we said, hey, 
don't do that witchcraft store. And then he opens up the store and makes a million dollars. He says, well, Bob Brooks told me not to do the witchcraft store. Well, maybe he was better at than I did. But yeah, we do have a policy that covers this. Question over here, Bob. Yeah. Where the press of flesh generation would be happy to come in and sit down with you. Do you get 30-year-olds coming in, or do they use the internet for this kind of stuff? The youngest person I had was still in college. And the person said, hey, the person said I want to get out of college and I don't want to look for a job, I want to open up my business. I said, man, that's great. This is Bill Gates type of thing. He was still in college. Um, and we say, yeah, social media is great, but you, know, you, still need to, you still need to get out and go to networking things. You still need to press the flesh. And you need to go to trade shows, because the old-fashioned stuff still is important. You always got to make sure you have some business cards, because I've had people come in, well, I don't have any business cards. I said, you have to have business cards with you all the time. Well, that's old school. No, it's not. You need a business card. If you meet somebody in the grocery store, what do you do? Oh, I, I sell witchcraft. Hey, here's my card. If you don't have that card, you're not, you're not prepared. That's not rocket science. It's not brilliance. It's just kind of experience of life. And you would tell anybody that. Yeah. Well, just, uh, we had used your score down there in Norfolk when we went to open our, our flower shop. Okay. And uh, we, we pretty much knew what we wanted to do, and we came down prepared with some things to look at. And uh, the gentleman who took care of us was fabulous. And he went through and criticized and made comments. Tremendous service. It's, it's, we've got, I'm an engineer, so if somebody says, I want to do government contracting, I'll say, yeah, I've got accountants, uh, we've got search people. So, I mean, if you walk in there, you just get who you get. But if you say, I want to talk to an accountant, you'll, you'll, you can talk to an accountant. I know we're about out of time. John's been beating on you to get his question in, so we'll do that. Comment on the uh, increased regulation and the difficulty it may be causing for starting businesses. Are you having increased regulation difficulties? It has not to us. I think because we try to get people forewarned before you go in there. You know, don't start your business. You know, don't sign that lease until you've got a permit. You know, until you've actually got your business. Make sure that you can do your business in your area. Uh, so I have not. We have not experienced any problems with the <coughs> regulation. But we try to tell on top of stuff. We read the articles, we post it, we say, have you seen this article in the newspaper? I don't get the newspaper. Well, maybe you should. And maybe you should get inside business, a great source of information. If you're not getting inside business, how are you going to stay on how are you going to So if you stay on that, I think you're better off. Answer the question, but have not experienced it. Great. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for being here. Okay. So you remember us, All right. and you remember our four-way test. Whichever, whichever order of the morning you do, it's up to you. That's for you. And then one more thing. For those of you that didn't hear, um, Ken Scott did win the Queen of Hearts last week. So we're back to, if you win today, uh, $12. twelve dollars. <laughs> Today, if you will draw the winning right. ticket for today, All right. and someone will have a chance to win $12. All right, the last three digits are 763. Nobody excited Somebody. on this one. You must, you got be, it. You must be present to win. 763, thank you again. Okay. Check your tickets. 388 Somebody must have bought a ticket. That's Camille. There we go. All right. Thank you, folks. Have a great week.